Welcome, Welcome back, back to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And today we are coming to you live from the <laughs> steps <laughs> of Hannah's Hannah Hor- Pass apartment. I mean, this is crazy. Also, 103104 India Street. I mean, they said it couldn't be done due to sound. And you guys be the judges of that. It's so funny because as we're on the steps of 104 India Street, we're watching 103 India Street be tear down currently. Or reupholstered. Vic I- Management Corporation, it is Banging, banging, <laughs> banging, banging, saying no podcast here, girls. No uh, podcast here. Um, no, this is so fun. We're recapping today. It's, honestly, it's the nicest day of the year. It's like that perfect temperature where like you can wear shorts, you can wear jeans, you can wear a sweater, you can wear a skirt. You know what I mean? It's like I'm wearing Uggs, but I don't have to. And that's w- when it's the best time. No, this is the kind of weather where it's like it's choose your own adventure. You can do whatever the hell you want. People are we're watching people right now. They go by in their biggest peak coats you've ever seen. And then we're watching girls kind of in in their athleisure. No worries at all. <laughs> is anyone worried about girls being athleisure other than me? I... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this whole episode, we're going to get so many apologies. We'd be like, oops, sorry. It's like, go for it. No, a no, bunch no. of people it's are apologizing sidewalk. to us to step into frame. And it's like, oh, no, we're in the way. No, it's our fault. It's on us. We're bad people. Um, I will say I'm wearing the biggest shades in the world today because I want to feel like Shoshana. You literally look like you're into bling ring. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to commit. I want to commit. What do they do in there? Stealing? I want to commit stealing. Paris Hilton. And that's based on a true story, right? It's based on a story. And oh, it's like and now p- the hammering has started. <laughs> well, HBO actually just released a documentary about the bling wearing like what actually happened, not the A24 version. Yeah. Yeah. Um just something to think about. <laughs> I'm really in my element out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm putting the shades up. Like, so you know, that would have be been a better of- idea. What? If we record this on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> So if you guys don't know, we <coughs> did move and we have yet to set up the media room. <laughs> yeah, we have. a Well, the thing is, the fact that we in our move, we get a media room. It says it all. If what? We're paying $500 each less than rent and we get a media room. Um, And yeah, I haven't been able to sleep through the night one single time <laughs> because of the radiator. Um, But that's that part true? of the charm of living in the worst place in the world. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> a place that I don't belong or fit in at. <laughs> A place that actively feels bad in my body to be she in. She is talking about Bushwick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like nobody wants me there. I don't want to be there. It's like, can we all agree I shouldn't be here in my Ugg boots right now? <laughs> I'm going to force it. It's like, you know, when you have one last puzzle piece and it's like, it's probably from a different puzzle, but like you're going to force it in there. I was telling Evan, I'm actually excited because now it's like when I want to be in a bad mood, I'll always have a reason to fall back on. And it's living in Bushwick it's, or the L-Trade. It's the fact that Evan made me live there. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say anything, but that really is going to be a terrible relationship, you and that poor Evan fellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to really work out. Um, <laughs> if you're just listening, I am hoping that I'm able to make this audio sound kind of epic. Well, sauce. Amelia one time had you a podcast that was filmed in a helicopter. So if she can do that, I think she can do one little management when corporation When I was 22 and head of production at a production company, <laughs> <laughs> my boss was like, we're going to make a podcast that happens inside a helicopter. Are you up for it? And I said, yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and can I get paid more than 35K? That'd be and really said, fantastic. no. No, you cannot. <laughs> was it Lana Rhodes? Um, it was the company that produced Lana Rhodes podcast, yes. Oh, wow, oh, oh. Okay, Shout wait. out to her. You know, they're making a documentary about the podcast company used to work at. Mine? About, it was like this evil guy who like tricked all these that was like filmed in the nicest mansion and it was like was it a podcast company where they all the nicest I mean like the nicest mansion all these celebrities used to live there and then they started a podcast thing in it and the guy was fucking crazy yeah that's exactly where I yeah, worked I heard about it on Tana Mojo's podcast oh my god yeah t- I met Tana Mojo there yeah, I don't know if it's a documentary, but they're doing there's something going on about it. So actually, instead of kind of giving an intro, we want to give review time. Uh, so in the review time, we're going to read one really mean review and one really somewhat nicer review. And there's of course, there's no purely kind ones. They're somewhat like just somewhat nicer and purely mean. Um, so we're going to take a stab at that. OK, this one's going to be really fun. Two stars. Nice of them not to give just one. Um, the subject line is unlistenable in parentheses. Sorry. So it's nice they're already apologizing. <laughs> the vocal fry and upspeak is so insane. At first, I thought the hosts were being ironical. 
Love your grammar choice. No way. I'm like, let me think about it. Ironical is actually the perfect word there. <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to be representing Gen Z, but sound more like California Valley, like OMG, totally girls, guys from the 80s. However, their Insta is cute and they communicate much better in the written form. So check that out. Which no one's ever said that to me before. <laughs> that literally can't be possibly Again, true. Again, I think this is our second negative review that's actually really um, complimentary in a way. They're like, they're doing something right. It's actually feedback. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually really kind feedback. I'm sorry. Um, and then okay, <laughs> Princess Peach four one one. Thank you so much for your review. Ten out of ten. Must listen. Five stars. Evan and Amelia will have me rewatching Girls till the day I die. Their hilarious yet insightful take on one of one for the best shows on television has me hooked from the start. I can listen to them talk all day. Ten out of ten. Must. Oh my God, Princess Peach, we die for you, like, girl. The way you read it, all love, it does. It sound like a hate comment. It was all nice words, but your <laughs> your reflection was um mean. <laughs> this is like my whole issue where I'm saying the sweetest, most earnest thing, and people think I'm attacking them. And there are so many girls I talk to that I'm like, I love your outfit, and they think I'm being Regina George. Like, I love your skirt. Where'd you get it? And it's like I don't know how to stop and sound earnest. It's my biggest problem right now. <laughs> right now. Ever, always. <laughs> Some problems are actually um, just opportunities. Okay, we're going to do Minute to Win It, all of season three. Evan, are you ready? Do you want to start or finish? I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Um, and then you're going to have to kind of pick up from there. Okay. Um, ready, yeah. set, go. Oh my god, Adam's at a coffee shop and guess who's there? Amy Schumer and his ex. And Lena is not so happy about that. You, but good thing for Lena because she got a job at GQ and at least she can take her frustrations out there by eating a lot of free snacks. Because you know what? Her book deal fell through. And you know what? Her publisher died too. And you know what? The second book deal fell through. Oh god, this poor girl. She can never have it easy, can she? Easy Street. No, it's more like she's on India Street and not Easy Street. Okay, also in season three, Jessica goes to rehab. She has to wear a females only sign because she is not good at talking to boys. Relatable as hell. I watched it inside um, Lena clip. Wait, not during Minute to Win It. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and Shoshana, There's no rules this episode, Shoshana, girl. of course, broke up with Ray. And so start of season three, she's starting her last year at NYU. And she's like, I'm ready to slay. I'm ready to like date boys that are my age and really be academically focused and career oriented and slay the night away. Marnie is thinking she's going to pursue music. Not going so great. Hannah, of course, gets a job at GQ. Oh, my God so exciting she should be happy but she's not and she ends up quitting Jenna Lyons actually fires her but she's like you can't fire me I quit Jessa tries to um, like recover you know of course they take the road trip to pick her up from rehab and she is doing okay she's working at a baby clothes store kind of a, it's kind of a tricky situation because um, she had to lie to her friends to actually get picked up yeah exactly if we remember that and then of course she does relapse because Jasper returns and uh, sorry but Jemima loves to have fun so we have to let her and then of course Adam gets into a Broadway play and that honestly like makes Hannah and Adam's relationship really Marnie thinks intense. she found a love of her life through this Broadway play as well by um Desi. We meet Desi. Desi. We meet Desi. She also is F U C K Ang Ray, which is so cool. Right. And, and kind of where we left off she last loves to week fuck a friend. with the finale is Marnie telling shows that she's been fucking Ray. And then Marnie is also making out and trying to start with stuff with Desi, who's still currently dating that hot girl Clementine. And Hannah gets into Iowa. And that is kind of, oh, and oh, she doesn't you get to graduate. Miss, you missed one really big point. What? And Hannah wears a t shirt with lizards hot glued to it. And I met the girl who made that t shirt and gave it to Lena Dunham at a show a month ago. Not at the show. She didn't give the, a month ago, she didn't give Lena Dunham a shirt. No. So, a month ago, I was at a show, and, and that was Minute to Win It. A month uh, ago, I was at a show, and this girl was wearing a bunch of spiders on her shirt, and I was like, oh my god, this reminds me of that shirt oh, Lena Dunham we wears with the something. lizards. And that girl was like, Miss I actually Lowe. need, I actually, oh yeah, Hannah's grandma died. <laughs> Sorry, quick caveat. Hannah's, Hannah's oh, and we died. forgot, they went to the beach house. They went to beach house. Yeah, we kind of, we actually captured a city and not anything outside of it. We are doing sex in the city. I know, out. we said no bottle. No capsule. Just cup. Which, I mean, you guys probably saw on our Instagram, but we did run into Patrick Wilson on the streets of the East Village this week, and that was a bottle episode. Yeah, because honestly, here's the exact play-by-play -play of that situation. I just finished my comedy show at Club Coming, LOL, 
um, and then one of our mutual friends is like, I think I just saw Patrick Wilson walk by, but he's already three blocks up. So I'm like just pretending because I'm like, oh, he's already so far away. I'm like, Patrick, Patrick, shoot me as loud as I can during the box. I'm like, he's gone. And then I, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to run over a block. To no, no, go, go through. And then I'm like, I'm just going to pretend and like run down the that block. That is so cute. <laughs> that is the cutest baby I've ever seen. But I'm like, I'll do a little LOL situation to make my friends laugh and just like run down the block as fast as I can scream Patrick. Guess who's at the end of the block and actually isn't not three blocks ahead, but Patrick Wilson. Then I'm like, F my F and L. I have to get the hell out of here. I just embarrass myself as much as I can in front of Patrick Wilson. And I run back to Amelia. I'm like, Patrick Wilson is at the end of the block. She says, let's go for it, girl. So then we go running back. I'm like, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. And we're like, can we get a selfies? And he's like, sure. And then his wife is like, whoa, what's this all about? And we're like, girls. And he's like, oh. And we're like, everyone thinks you're hot. And then his wife is like, Dill Fuller. <laughs> his wife was so iconic. I was obsessed She's with in her. Succession. And she, of course, is a very successful actress herself. Obviously, all girls are successful actresses themselves. Not, Duh. All, not every girl. Almost every girl I know is a successful actress. Almost no girls you know are successful <laughs> actresses. <laughs> but they want to be, and I think they will be one day. And that's what counts. Um, it is so cool when you have one drink at Club Coming, you actually get four, and then you're so confident. Because no, I was like, oh, I am going to go speak and be like, people think you're so hot in the bottle episode that you were on in Girls, your thoughts? <laughs> no, it's literally, it's MILF Manor. The way I was literally like, you know, you know, so many girls are obsessed with how hot you are in girls. And he was like, whoa, really? And I was like, believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he was so shocked. And he was looking for his Uber. And we're like, can we take a selfie with you? He's like, yeah, but I'm going to lose a star. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Well, Patrick, thanks for losing a star for us. He really didn't want to. I know. I love running into celebrity. I always it's always like the worst way possible. Like one time. Um, James Vanderbeek was standing behind my mom in a TSA pre-check. Who? It's James Vanderbeek. He's from Dawson's Creek. And mm-hmm. he's also being Apartment 23, which would also be an amazing rewatch, honestly. I never watch it, but I love Madeline Louise and Gilmore It's one Girls. of the funniest shows ever. Oh, yes, we she really watch isn't it. that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I don't need to tell this story, I guess. Oh, I'm it's like, really I'm funny. I'm trying to think of celebrities I've met. I've, I... I mean, I famously worked on Lindsay Lohan's podcast, but I was only ever speaking to her via Zoom because uh, she lives in Dubai. So I was kind of um, being her executive producer remotely. I loved when she lived in Dubai. She was, I know, she's still living in Dubai. She's married. I think she's having a kid. And guess what? There might be a Freaky Friday too. Ah! Oh, yeah, but they're kind of, it's like Jamie Lee Curtis's. Is she, Jamie Lee Curtis me in a tail? Yeah, I think it's going to be the OGs. It's not going to be like Renee Rapp starring as Lindsay or something. Oh. We can't I have mean, that happen twice. I would be sad if anyone wasn't playing Lindsay, but if it's R- Renee Rapp, I wouldn't be that upset. Yeah, I'm actually totally cool. I think a lot of people are upset about that. <laughs> I'm totally cool, cool with it. If every single movie that Lindsay Lohan's ever done Renee Rapp just like, <laughs> reprises it. Reprises it. Write that one down. <laughs> Write that down, folks. <laughs> what was the other word in the review that was just said? Uh, ironical. Ironical and reprise it's it. <laughs> <laughs> not you saying ironical incorrectly, <laughs> but I shouldn't be like judging you for that because it's not even a real word to begin with. <laughs> and welcome back to HBO Girls Rewatch. Um, yeah, we're not really on the steps anymore, as you can see. We thought we'd get up close and personal to shoot for my bed. It's cool. That is a thought. That is a thought that was had. Um, is it what happened? You'll never know. Actually, what had happened is um, our uh, well, phone died. What happened died. was <laughs> <laughs> the phone died, um, and we kind of were like, you know, what? a bedroom would be so cute. Yeah, we were losing daylight, um, so we just were going bed mode. Oh now. my god, I wish we could just explain for like five seconds the scenario of like people trying to get around the camera that we literally took up the whole sidewalk with. Now, I want to say that when I set up my phone on a tripod in Greenpoint, I said, somebody's going to walk by, snatch my phone, <laughs> and run away. But what had, ha- had actually happened was everybody um, was like, sorry, and walked like straight into oncoming traffic to avoid getting in our <laughs> shot, putting their life in danger for us. Children, mothers, kind of all involved. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful thing, and people would literally look us in the eyes while we were recording being like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to walk in front. Or like when they were going around, it's like, oh, 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 oh. It's like you can walk in front of the camera. AI technology will remove you, I assume. You I don't know, know. I have nothing to do with the tech really side. What I really wish was that the construction mm. was more apologetic. 
Um, there kind of was so at the end. I did just edit the first 15 minutes and there is so many bangs. So for those still listening, thank you for powering <laughs> through. Um, now we're kind of in a, in a quiet Real place. Raw. Well, the first podcast idea or like the third podcast idea I had was like a podcast but outside <laughs> <laughs> it's like here's the thing i'm always in a situation where somebody's like what if we did a podcast in a wind tunnel <laughs> and i have to be like i hate to be like not saying yes vanessa bear or bad news yeah the bear bad news yeah vanessa bear bad news <laughs> <laughs> but we can't we can't re- that's not how sound famously works that's why studios buy such big sound stages well it's like because our brains are able to like to filter out so much sound but yet we forgot that microphones necessarily can't do that no they kind of pick up whatever they want although i they will do say they, yeah the first 15 minutes were quieter than they felt while we were out there i used some fun effects um but enough about us wait wait oh no 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 i'm like it's quieter than it felt. So did it not pick up as much as you thought it would? Or did effects do more than you thought they would? I turned D noise on to 90%. <laughs> 90%. 100%. Classic, it would have been silent. The classic nine zero. Yeah, but enough about production. Let's dive into our recap of season three. I'm like, I'm ready. I think the main takeaway from season three was Lena Dunham said, let me get as many guest stars as I possibly can. And this is where we really yeah, had a HBO lot of said fun. We're increasing the budget. Yeah. Go go nuts, girl. Give Amy Schumer <laughs> some cold, hard cash. Um, she kicked us off by yelling at, not yelling at Like, Ray. How much do you think they paid Patty Lapone? Less than you would expect. Yeah, that's the same thing as Hannah's apartment price rent. Yeah. <laughs> and all those words made sense. We had Patty Lapone, we had we Amy Schumer, we had Gabby Hoffman, we had um Doyle from Gilmore Girls. Oh, but we can also leave this caveat. As we're sitting on the stoop of Hannah's Greenpoint apartment, mm-hmm. which cut to earlier in this episode, it's all young families now. There's no struggling artists that are twenty five trying to figure out if they should work at GQ or not. It's all like young families who like children have iPads and really nice strollers. I can't believe we have to cut for time the five year old kid oh. who lives in the third floor being like, Hi, you have an iPad? That's crazy. I have an iPad. We also had to cut Amelia rapping, which I'm like will beg her to we'll do. We'll recreate again. it, but it won't <laughs> seem as original. <laughs> um, who else got start this season? Well, Jessica Williams, what's her face? Was that rehab? Jenna Lyons. Oh. Jenna Lyons. Danielle Brooks. I mean, we really went all guns a blazing. Who was your favorite guest star of season three? What'd you say? Patty Lapone. It's like not even like Amy Schumer. Sorry, Amelia shook her head. It was the wrong answer. It was an A or oh, no. B. I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, Amy Schumer would say it's more of a guest star of season two. Kind of just Here's the period. thing with Amy Schumer's scene in Girls. It's like so not based in like what actually happens it's so like when you're in the shower and you're like i wish i had said this i feel like that whole scene is just like any girl in their 20s who gets home and is like if i could go back in time and really say my mind in a perfect pre-written way this is what i would say and that's why it's so fun to watch guest stars aside let's go girl by girl recap what was marnie's deal this season (laughs) <laughs> uh, well the thing is we kind of see her starting this season off in her mom's condo in new jersey right so it's like actually she was at her lowest in the beginning of the season and like any progression was good progression that is true she gets her own apartment she's it's l- yeah the kitchen is inside the bed but we've all been there the bathroom is the kitchen the kitchen is the bedroom the bedroom is the bathroom and the oven's a shoe closet <laughs> Because Marnie only eats smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we learned this season. Um, Marnie is flailing. So the season starts out. Charlie has officially left her. She thought they were going to get married. And then yes, so she's truly. like mourning the death of her college relationship that when they got back together, she really thought was going to happen. And so then who does she hook up with? Who doesn't she hook up with? <laughs> <laughs> is Ray the first one she hooks up with? For this season, yeah. yeah. It's mostly just Ray because there's like, you're like, why is Marnie not F U C K ing? And then we kind of like come around to it all. And we're like, oh, she's taking her frustration out again with Ray. 
Right. She, I mean, Ray and Marnie's thing is so interesting because I feel like Ray is like so attracted to Marnie's like organization and like optimism. Right. And Ray is so honest. And I feel like Marnie famously loves when boys are mean to her. I do think it's like, I actually think it's more of like pop door girl nerd guy dynamic is what's going on here. And Ray said it himself in this sh- the show where it's like he really likes Marnie because it's like the girl he couldn't get in high school and that's why mm. it's my dad's favorite character who was the popular <laughs> girl in your high school what's she up to now PR I assume I'm just guessing in the city one's getting married and one's doing PR all the prettiest girls my high school city, was yeah. so big that there wasn't really mean girl style popular click but I'd say the friend group is all working in PR. Is that true? Yeah, in like <laughs> a, one of the three major cities in Texas and like engaged to some guy named Ben. Yeah, that would make the most amount of sense. And that's actually the same exact situation I have. Oh, and one of them loves to do TikToks where they like hold up a curtain and then crosses off to them looking amazing in like a course that they made. Of the curtain, really impressive stuff. That's actually really impressive. Shout out, there's Kaylee always two E's. <laughs> one a little bit more creative than the rest in the front totally. group. Totally, who like doesn't really know that until she gets to college, and she's like, "My friends are a little bit different now." That is like so hair real. Talk. It's like all of them like get drinks, go to dinners, whatever, and then one of them has a side business. Yeah, and she's a crazy one. Yeah, <laughs> she's a little bit more random. She is making a TikTok. Yeah, she's really grasping on the TikTok, and she has a very niche following of like five k who like. Like really do love her do you think marnie would be um online running a business being a small entrepreneur oh marnie 100 percent is turning her shower curtains into ball gowns <laughs> on tiktok <laughs> into ball gowns. <laughs> um and ray is still working at grumpy's i swear to god well it's called ray's isn't it no so he gets his own he's becomes the manager of the new coffee shop but the it's new still grumpy's. called grumpy's uh, or is it called ray's, ray's. <laughs> you know what we it don't is care raised. it is raised it's like grumpy 2.0 but it is raised aside from who marnie's fucking um she has a lot of job shifts so she's working at ray's coffee shop and then she's trying to like maybe get back into the art world old man ray's yeah <laughs> <laughs> she runs into susan bitch you're taking all the mochi classic right. at some point her job is just like running around chinatown like doing some she's the only person in the city like using the outdoor gyms that they install <laughs> <laughs> marty using the outdoor gym on the west side highway oh my i want to i'm like i'm dying to use one of those <laughs> there's one actually not too far from our apartment you gotta I just go get for your it. ass to green point i gotta get my ass to green point um yeah, she gets a job at the art gallery as Sujin's assistant, but then she's also really trying to get into music because Ray has a stern conversation with her and is like, well, what do you want? And she's like, to be singing. Yeah, she's she's not going to admit it at first because, again, the most she's the most popular girl in her high school, but then actually when push comes to shove, she's a creative. Yeah. <laughs> if there's she one went thing, to Oberlin for a reason. If there's one thing these girls are, it's, sec- it's secret, like really creative. Or yeah, not secret at all. Not secret. Maybe not that creative. All that. Yeah, they actually are all really creative. Would Marnie go I'd to lie. an open mic if Desi didn't push her to? Hmm. Yeah, that girl's got a chutzpah. She performed Rent at Hannah's birthday party <laughs> on ass for her just to get a chance actually to sing. Actually, explicitly asked not to. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah said, please, let's not sing. And she said, but what if we did? <laughs> oh, God. No, oh, but. yeah. Hannah turned 25 this year. This season. This season. I know. Her birthday party was so fun. Wait, what was the password at the bar? Banana. Was it banana? Because that's my secret word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's banana. That's what I thought it was. Because I was saying this last time, but my word for any time, like in improv or anyone needs a situation, like needs a random word, it's always banana. That's amazing. So it's, I guess, Hannah Banana, sure. But Evan Banana, too. Oh, I never clicked that it was Hannah Banana. Yeah, her dad calls her Hannah Banana. I kind of hate that. Every Hannah classically is being called Hannah Banana by her dad. That, it's, like, it's like contrived at this point. And I'm like, there's so many other things we could do with Hannah. Everything's contrived. That's really true. Yeah. Especially my Heim poster that lives on. It's like Amelia took almost nothing from her old room except for a Heim poster. <laughs> Those three sisters will haunt me to the day I die. 
I didn't know their height difference was that massive either. I think they might be on Apple boxes. Yeah. Soap boxes. Just for the, <laughs> just for the visual. Um, I feel like that's enough about Marnie. Let's jump into Hannah. Well, I do want to say oh. Marnie, just like the end of season, Marnie's so proud of herself after kissing Desi. Oh my and gosh, then, she is so happy at Major Barbara, the Broadway show. Or, and then Hannah's like, that's another guy who's dating someone that you're K-I-S-S. Literally. Wait, is there another one this season? Well, Ray, because... No, Ray. It's kind of just Ray. I feel like we're forgetting one of Marnie's hookups. I know. I really feel that way. But who has it been? Booth, Jonathan, Charlie. No, I don't think we are. She gets 28 <laughs> hookups. You know what the really... Pit- most artists- Why'd you say 28? Because it could be that many. It's- oh, I thought you like knew a fact. Oh, but no. you just said a number that's not true. No. Okay. You know what? We also we can't talk about Marnie's season without talking about Beach House episode. So she planned... Because <laughs> if anything, it's her episode. I know. Marnie plans an amazing adult trip for her and her friend group. And then they are so resenting her for planning it out. I mean, we've spoken at nauseum with Miss Tessabelle. The, the only... It's like... I do think it's so pivotal to her story. Because she tried with her friends. She's like, okay, I'm done trying. I'm just going to hook up with Desi. It is like everybody's resenting her for being so planned out. And so she's like, well, fine then. I'm going to fuck everyone's boyfriend. So <laughs> that's how not organized I am. That's how you can't be mad at me for overplaying. Do you think hooking up with Ray is like a little act of rebellion for like Shoshana's outburst? No. No. I honestly think that the she, thing is about Shoshana's cam. outburst is I'm a girl who has outbursts. And it's like nobody cares is affected the next day. I don't know that's true. <laughs> I can actually personally say that's not true at all. <laughs> cut that. <laughs> we'll get, cut that. <laughs> Leave it in. It's important. <laughs> I just think it's like in friendships, it's like a lot of like, oh, a dramatic. It's like you move forward. You don't have sex with someone's ex-boyfriend because of People what they People are really spiteful. Actually, you know what? <laughs> the more I try and prove my point the more i believe your point <laughs> <laughs> you're like this thing oh i love that i would never de- um survive and debate weren't we talking about this yesterday you'd be you were like you'd be an amazing lawyer and i'm like no my emotions always <laughs> come first i cry anytime anyone yells at me and anytime anyone makes a point i'm convinced and that's why i actually think you'd be an amazing lawyer <laughs> <laughs> this is circle back it's like you would really ride and die for your clients even if they are mass murderers like you would fight for them tooth and nail i would end up going to jail on their behalf <laughs> i'd be like well if she has to serve 27 years so will i <laughs> <laughs> so devastating um yeah the beach house episode what do you want to say about it i mean it's like i really want to go to a beach house right now in a way, this is a beach house. I we know, are, light is gorgeous. We are so close to Coney Island. Oh, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Should we dive into Hannah? Oh, uh, dive into Hannah after beach house? Yeah. Like she dived in the pool? <laughs> <Did> she? <laughs> she cannonballed. <laughs> <laughs> um so hannah starts out the season happily in love with adam and hannah ends the season low-key breaking up with adam i think we see hannah really delve into the relationship get comfortable and then when adam gets into the broadway show see like that comfort that was established be redefined and freak the fuck out which is so common when people are like i just wish like our relationship could be like it was six months ago and we see this in the role play episode where Hannah's like I just like want it to be exciting like it was when we first started having sex and he's like well then we fell in love so our relationship's different now like I think Hannah is so like not wanting things to change and not wanting like things to develop I mean first off change is scary Uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh we all know that Cut to me sobbing in this bed a week ago because change is too hard. Well, the thing is, she doesn't want. I think her relationship. She doesn't want it to change so much because her personal life has so much change going through it. Like she thought she's me a published author. Her dreams were gonna come true. Bam, her publisher died. Oh, she gets another chance. Bam, at a non compete clause. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna get a, my dream job without a referral somehow. 
or like a cool job without a referral at GQ magazine where Jenna Lyons is my boss. Oh, and I interview Patty and I'm still miserable. miserable. Yeah. So it's like, uh, that's so tumultuous for one girl. It's like, maybe sometimes the house can be a stable place too, but uh oh, your boyfriend is getting his dreams come true and they kind of conflict with your presence. Literally. I think it's actually so hard because people are in such different different things click career wise for people in the early 20s at different times and like that can be so stressful yeah i mean hannah i this is said in the show and i think it's a really good point <laughs> the show made a really good point about itself um, i'm getting sad about life that's all talking it took. about hannah <laughs> that's all it took well she ends up at iowa it is it, she ends up at iowa this i season. know but it's like grad school well, we know, we know how Iowa goes. But I yeah. guess it's award-winning. Mm. I just think it is so, so the worst when you get a job that on paper is a dream job and then you're going to it and feeling bad and you're eating pop chips and you're like, I should be happy. Everybody would kill for this job. Why am I absolutely miserable? <sighs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> really your monologue go (laughs) (laughs) it's just so and like i get mad at myself for like not being grateful or like feeling guilty about like wanting more so it is cool to see hannah be like i want more and like be a brat about it because then i'm like oh i'm not even being a brat about it but i am having those thoughts and maybe i am valid well, yeah, I think in an American society classic, your job is supposed to fulfill you all the way up. <laughs> in American job classic, classic. your job is supposed <laughs> to fill you all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. Well, American job classic, your job is supposed to fill you up all the way. <laughs> um, it really, I mean, the thing about it's like your life is actually so much more classic American, not life. What? Wait, wait. I no, actually got this. I think you're I'm a genius some, and keep going, really keep going, keep going. I'm really I'm really close. <laughs> I'm so close. Like, I'm like, you're edging me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Off the bed. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. Um, No, but you know what? It's like you – I think something before you – we were saying this before we had a cut last time. But mm-hmm. before you graduate college, you have such a clear idea of like what will fulfill you. Mm-hmm. Like in college, you're like, I'm going to be an author. Here's my five-year plan how to become an author. Wait, really quick. What was you in college? Um, I was like, I'll get a marketing job. I actually barely had any say. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> You had oh, barely well. any say in your dreams as a, ch- as a young adult? I was like, I'll start a business one day, but not tomorrow. Mm, okay. That's it, such a um, mature perspective to take at 19. Like in college. Well, my parents, the one time I told them I wanted to be a mythologist in um, seventh grade, they were like, you should be an accountant. I was like, you're right. I shouldn't have a dream. (laughs) (laughs) I love the idea of you being truly 13 and then being like, you're going to be an accountant. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, because school is, you know what? I was. They're like, you actually love pre algebra, so. (laughs) (laughs) But I actually was really ideologicalist. Ideologically inclined. No, none of those. None, <laughs> we were none of us were right. You were an idealist, ideological, or a realist. She was an ideologist. <laughs> she was a realist. Um, no, hate all that. But I actually thought so. I actually studied marketing and environmental science. So I thought I was going to graduate college and like make a job up where I like was the head of marketing at a solar panel company. Mm-hmm. And then I actually was like, that sounds really boring. I love solar panels, but, like, let Joe Biden deal with those. In college, I watched Love on Netflix, the Gillian Jacobs Judd Apatow vehicle with Iris Apatow. <laughs> love. Um, And she kind of wore cool outfits and worked at a radio station in L.A. And I was like, right. oh, this is going to be my life. And then I did it. I watched that and I was like, I would love to be a tutor on set. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be an on set tutor. For one really sassy girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to be Mickey so bad and live with an Australian roommate who had a cat and I ran know. focus groups for a living. Epic. It's so funny because you literally live in an intercept of those two girls. Like you are the third roommate and you're like the Venn diagram. <laughs> Um, but yeah, then I got all that and was miserable and I was like, well, fuck. 
what my microphone's doing. Um, <laughs> this is gorgeous. No, I, I, yeah, I think in college it was just like I'm gonna be in environmental science, who also is a head of PR and marketing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. Yes, yeah, so I was like, I'm gonna do good. I really do like environmental science, but then I you will graduate. say you thrift. Yeah, I really you only buy second hand. Yeah, conscious. It's like that's probably the best thing you can do at our small level. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but how are we Marco relating this v. to Hannah? I cut it off right where it was getting good. Oh, I think it's interesting because all of her friends. Well, Marnie graduated college, which is a really clear idea that she was gonna like be the head of an be an art gallery essentially. I she was gonna be Charlotte from Girls. From <laughs> Sex in the City. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when that, but then she low-key wanted to sing. Well, I think no one asked her ever what she wanted. And I don't think she asked herself. And she never asked herself what she wanted as well. Like, you know what? I think you also, when you're in college, you also don't realize how many, like, dreams are achievable. I don't know. I feel the same way Marnie feels towards singing that I felt towards comedy. Where it's like I didn't even touch it in college, and I didn't, and I did it the moment I came to the city, or like a few months into the city, because you kind of come here like, oh, all you need is to like go to an open mic, go to a few comedy shows, and take a class, and that's so much easier. When it's like that dream is so much farther away, when no one in your circle or anyone tangential to you is even living something close to that, so there's no steps to see it. But once you're like actually here living breathing experiencing the city it's like yeah you can be a musician because all your other friends are doing it too and it's like they make it look easy i will say moving to the city everybody is so much more confident about achieving their dreams than you are and so then you're like oh that person's dumb i should be dumb no does literally. anybody have no, that, that experience where it's like sense. you move to the city you're like i have to work at a corporation obviously like that's how you survive in the big city hello and then you meet all these people who are low-key killing it in their creative endeavors even though they're really dumb unorganized have no like why self- are you looking at me <laughs> have no self <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not talking about you um and then you're like oh if this person literally thinks they can do it maybe i could probably well i think you also don't realize how unfulfilling a corporate career can be like all my jobs in corporate america um like everyone that's in the same level as me is like 10 years older than me Mm -hmm. like doing the same thing i'm doing my boss would go to like the best one to like harvard and stanford and it's like was just a director of marketing at a company after like working so 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 hard for so many years yeah and you're like oh you can do everything right and stuff doesn't even go that great for you mm-hmm. like it's just like oh what is the fulfillment here and then nothing you actually do really works towards something our generation knows too many ceos that are dying by suicide there are a lot of CEOs. i think ceos are very fulfilled Kate I think it's Spade? like. Well, she already sold the company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to Shoshana. I think it naturally leads into Shoshana. Well, Shoshana is, again is really idealistic version me. of like who, who I mean again and we don't go back to the college metaphor of it all where it's like, like Shoshana's the girl who's graduating college with like she has the five year plan she and she was Marnie in some sense too. Yeah, I think what stands out about Shosh is like even at the beach house scene where she's yelling and she's like, it's been four years since all of you graduated and you have nothing to show for it. Like it is that naivety of like being 21, 22 and being like, I'm going to make everything fucking happen for myself. Like you are so confident in college. You're like, I know exactly what I want and I'm going to fucking get it. Especially if you go to NYU, you're like, the world's my fucking oyster. Oh, yeah. If you live in upper middle white class area in either New York or L.A. suburbs and have parents that are like good at networking or talking to people like you can actually discover you can get whatever you want in this world in your mind's eye. Yeah. I mean, even the scene where Hannah and Shosh are in the hallway of the motel when they like go to pick up yeah. Jessa from rehab and Hannah's like, don't you realize like Jess is down so bad? And she's like, literally, no, like her life is perfect. And then Hannah's makes the comment like, aren't you scared to graduate? And she's like, no, whatever I do when I graduate, it's going to be way better than what I'm doing now. Like to have that confidence of like school is n- School is fun. It's the least fun thing I'll ever do. <laughs> like, I have so much more fun ahead of me. That's crazy. 
No, you have to feel that way. You have to have hope. Oh, I didn't. I think I really felt that way. I was like, college is so great. Can't wait to graduate. It's like, I can't wait to go live in a city. I have no idea what my life would look like. I also thought every single day until I actually push came to shove, I was going to move to Austin, Texas. <laughs> just to be a little bit different. Um, and then I actually went there and I was like, all this is is like one lake slash river, which is the same thing somehow. Lady Bird Lake, what's a river? And I don't know how that works. A million taco restaurants and then like nowhere fun to go out and brew and brews for like 50 year olds who have startups to drink beer in the middle of the day okay you don't or need consulting. to bully austin texas <laughs> they're trying their turn no, it, it's like austin keep it weird i'm like please try better sorry keep it weird oh my- it's like not weird at all this city <laughs> somehow boston's weird in austin um, I don't mean it. Can you cut all that? <laughs> <laughs> Shosh this season starts out free of Ray, ready to really embrace her senior year, make it all happen. She fucks a bunch of random dudes casually. They're all obsessed with her. She's like, you mean nothing to me. She does lose sight of her goal, though, right? She parties a little too hard and then doesn't end up graduating well, on time. Yeah, I mean, her goal is to both have fun and be Val Victorian at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then she fails her What's it called? Gynecology class? No. Geology? No. Glacial rock? Glaciology. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't environmental. <laughs> it's cool for me not to know a single word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's perfect. And we're rooting for her. I think she gets so sassy this season. Somebody said, I love how confident so so she is this season. I think it is. Like, comparatively, like, she was so shy, like, follower obsessed with her cousin jessa like just nervous girl first two seasons and we really see her be like i know who i am i know what i want and i'm going for it now no i know every nyu student gets to be three years older than everyone else i I swear to god going to school in the city will actually will do wonders for you like in many ways yeah i am 25 but in other ways i'm 17 no literally my parents went to nyu and they're like you can't go there and maybe for grad school but not for undergrad you're gonna hate it and it's like and i would tell everyone i was like my parents said i can't go to nyu because i'm not ready yet and it's like now i'm not ready for new york (laughs) (laughs) rip um okay lastly can we cover jessa crazy season for our girl talk about rehab relapse like, relocation I, I know i hope to my kirk didn't like internalize anything to happen to her this season i know because it is tough so she starts out at rehab having to wear a sign that says females only you know we got a lot of comments on the tiktoks around that episode about how unrealistic the portrayal of rehab is um which is interesting i've never been so i don't know but it does seem like in a normal rehab facility the people who work there would be better equipped to help jessa than these people were i mean i'm i think they all had somehow environmental science marking degrees working there <laughs> it's like no one studies psych- psychology to kind of just like four beta men and like one stern woman yeah jasper really came to fuck things up jessa was of course kind of evil in rehab um but we still are like rooting for her location i'm just really thinking about jessa's journey here or she's kind of just like she goes from last time we see her before rehab it's like she's running away from her dad she disappears no one knows really where she went Mm -hmm. hannah's freaking out she really needs jessa in her life then jessa like through her best of her abilities, like trying to do better for herself and like reaches out to her wealthy grandmother who buys her Uggs and sends her to rehab. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to do better. I'm not going to be my father. I'm going to try harder. And then no one at the rehab is actually able to help her. So she just Fs around and like um, has lesbian sex but doesn't mean it. And then <laughs> she's like, you know what? I'm going to try it again. And this time it's on my own prerogative. I'm going to work at a baby boutique. And then she's bored off her brain because it's like, who needs that much baby clothing and she just like gaslights women to buying black <laughs> christening dresses epic epic sauce cut that <laughs> um to buy black christening dresses and like that's all the fun she's having she like truly is just trying to like gossip with the mailman and so and now- even the mailman won't gossip with her and i think being bored in new york city is like 
it's a hard thing to have to do. <laughs> At least the loneliness. I think she's really lonely. So I'm just picturing so many mean comments to that sentence. Being born in New York City is a really hard thing to do. It, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, there's just so many things to do here. Just going for a walk is like overstimulating sometimes. So it's like to be bored is a truly a challenge. But yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, so, but seeing as she is really bored because her life is usually so much more exciting than it is now, and she thinks stability will be her solution to just like freedom, but actually she needs more excitement than that because uh, she's an exciting girl. So she goes from the most bored setting in her life to being like coked out again and like relapsing with Jasper. And she's like she has really good intentions but does not have the follow-through that she hopes she would have and she i think she just also in some ways just like gives herself too big of challenges like she's like i'll be all the way better now and it's like no that's not how that works that is so real when you're like deeply depressed and you're like and i'm actually gonna be not depressed starting now yeah (laughs) and it's like okay you can't change your whole thing (laughs) just by saying it that is so real but you know what she ends the season in a really like interesting place where we think she gets this dream job at the art gallery but you know what she has this this suicide this like very famous artist or like somewhat famous artist but it does like it's a real like that's of course adventure always finds jessa and i think she really gets to remember that in this moment where it's like she doesn't always have to search for adventure because it always is finding her as well which i'm sure is a really exhausting prospect (laughs) <laughs> no it is like some people know nothing really exciting ever happens to them but sometimes people like jessa just excitement is coming out of the wall i too. know beauty is just like come into my life it's so different okay i think we covered all the girls right briefly can we cover the boys so ray you know moves on from so she, I think gets the job, has new responsibility, and it's like, you know, living in a nice apartment, trying to make his apartment nice, trying to like really move forward, figure out what he wants. So hats off to him. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'm mad just talking about him for 12 seconds. For Adam. Um, Adam also pissed at what the hell do you mean you got on I'm Broadway? I'm mad at Ray this season. I'm mad at all the men, obviously. Um, I don't know. I think Ray really like kind of steps into his power. Like, it's about time. You'd... He's 45. <laughs> it took him dating a 21 year old to like have one and ounce of self respect. Uh, uh, I think he just thought he was too good for everything, and then he realized you can't be too good for everything if you don't try anything. Adam and Ray are perfect for each other. Um, Adam, emotionally immature psychopath on the road trip, kind of running into the woods, breaking the radio. Hate that. Um, gets a role in a Broadway play. Doesn't make any sense. He has no experience. <laughs> How did he even get that audition? It's honestly, so raw and real. Um, then he really cares about it, which I don't really believe. No offense. I believe he cares. I just don't. I think he's just naturally. I think we're supposed to believe he's one of the most naturally talented people on earth too whatever he's full of his sister's a psycho i guess we do get a soft side of him we didn't even talk about the funerals the deaths of the the deaths of the season the season was a lot of death we got grandma flo dying love learning about hannah's family um yeah and then hannah hannah's editor dying and having to lie to adam about that about a wet prom because she doesn't seem like a kind person would you ever lie to your boyfriend what prom um fake cousin to prom because they're sick or something did you say what listen i don't know i just i'm like what i'm like what was the theme water world like what no no there was no what <laughs> oh i heard sorry i heard what i i was really trying to like say no lot. yeah yeah, yeah. You, you did a really good job i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no yeah the fake prom with the dying girl and adam with her, his dying cousin who he, like, takes the prom and, like, buys this really fancy dress for even though he has no money. And then Hannah's, like, barely affected by the story. I guess Adam is kind of a good boyfriend. He goes and helps her upstate on the motorcycle when she gets in a car crash because of her cousin. <laughs> 
whatever. And but then it's like Hannah does, of course, ruin everything by getting into Iowa and telling Adam right before and being anxious attachment style. Um, so then we kind of see Adam again. I'm just like, if a grown man like had that reaction towards me after their Broadway debut, I'd be like, what the f-? like? Adam is so angry and can't say it in English. I'm like, this is crazy. Get a, a grow up. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's this place anger in that situation. He just really takes it all out on Hannah there Banana. Like, Fuck! I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, you are insane. Get away from me! And I'm so glad Hannah walks away and gets gets her Iowa letter and smiles, smiles like she does, sm- smiling like There's that. There's so many layers to the things you're saying right now. <laughs> This is I know you personally. <laughs> <laughs> Things I wouldn't dare to say online, but it's so funny. <laughs> um, and then Elijah and Hannah reconnecting. Thank God. Thank God. Thank Honey, God I'm they're home. back together. Honey, I'm home. Honey, I'm home. When those two are in a scene, I feel like I want to keep living. Yeah. I, it's like ba 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 ba. Him coming to Broadway, being saying nothing but funny stuff. Andrew Randall's eats, eats, eats. 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 Can't wait for season four. I hope there's more of them. <laughs> there is. Um, um, well, you know what? I think Elijah, Elijah's so class clown energy to me. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, they might not know what's going on, but they're going to make everything such a good time. It's so it's you coded. So- <laughs> I love Elijah um, and his really mean boyfriend. Oh, Doyle, Jesus Christ. Oh, we got some, we got some, um... Okay, so to close out this episode, we are just going to read. So we asked on IG what everybody's favorite quotes, moments, arcs from season three were. So we're going to read them out now. Um, Walk down memory lane before we dive into season four. Are you ready, Evan? In a way. We go. <laughs> okay, Kareem Bain says, the scene in the beach house up where Elijah's boyfriend likens Hannah to crazy Sadie. Now, too many men are saying evil things to Hannah and her body and her Crazy face this Sadie. season. Well, the the thing is, gay men are so good at giving veiled insults. Which that like, is so true. Oh, my God. You're my favorite friend. Crazy Sadie. She's disgusting. She's fat. She's always <laughs> naked. She's the worst girl I've ever met. I'm obsessed with her because she's the world's worst person. You remind <laughs> me of the world's worst person. There are so many gay men that will literally say the meanest thing you could possibly think to say to me. In a loving tone. And I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> <All> <laughs> I right. believe you. I'm convinced. You got me. They're like, you're fucking evil and psycho. That's why I love you. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me as a person. Yeah. I barely understand how you can get out of bed in the morning because everything you do is really bad and awful. And you've never told a real joke in your life. I'm obsessed with everything you're doing. Almost word for word what a man has said to me. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of quoting. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. You're awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love Kyle for submitting just the emojis. Please this is- do it. Wink, wink, kissy face puppy on a pony. He texted mad emojis. What he really means is blow me. Little um, Frax. Lil Frax. Frax. F-R-E-X. So we tagged Lil like Frax little when flex. we posted like a meme of that or whatever. And she reposted it on our the story. The Raptress. Yeah, the Raptress. She reposted it and was like, I was a PA on girls. Um, and this was my first time rapping in front of anyone. And it was so such a cool experience throwback. And I'm like, that is so cute. They were having the time of their life on that set. Imagine yeah, being uh, a yeah, PA yeah. on girls. There's That's like Chloe Trost was a PA on SNL and now working on SNL. That is so fun. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> but she was scared to tell anyone. I was watching this TikTok. She was scared really? to say it to anything. She's like, I actually used to be a PA on this show, but she was so nervous because she thought I'd actually work against her in her audition or like, or just like mm-hmm. during the whole SNL process. She didn't say anything except for this like interview I watched of her the other day. I love keeping a little secret and then saying it when it best serves <laughs> me. That is so. <laughs> Chloe Shows, you're a genius queen. <laughs> Um, what else do we have? Marion said, so I lost a friend yesterday, a close friend. Marnie. Okay. So Hannah's in the coffee shop and says, so I lost a friend yesterday, a close friend. And Ray is like, Marnie finally decided to throw in the towel. <laughs> Incredible one-liner. Cutting. There's so many layers. And then he was going to go fuck Marnie. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam also said she loved the quote, show should. I feel like my bandana collection is like my most developed collection. What do you think your most developed collection is? 
I can tell. I think it's like Gil- Gilmore Girls merch. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one Lorelai t-shirt. That's one too many. <laughs> <laughs> Any shirts that you bought to be Lorelai? <laughs> it is. My entire or Twitter all. algorithm is serving me one girl who tweets Gilmore Girl memes. <laughs> so my entire feed is just like memes about 2003 WB shows. Um, <laughs> she's like walking around bossing everyone around like a mean, skinny Miss Hannigan. Now, is this show about Marnie at the beach house? Shosh telling Ray that they need to have a chat after she finds out he fucked Marnie. Oh, yeah. The way Shoshana enters, like, major Broadway, major Barbara, the bo- Broadway play. I like <laughs> major Broadway. The major Broadway play <laughs> and of major like, Barbara. At intermission, we're talking. And then it gets intermission, and Shosh is not speaking, and Ray is like, here's peanut M&M's. Um, the intermission is kind of short, so if you want to talk, you should. It's like, I actually do love you. I lied. And then oh, Ray's God. like, actually, I don't. I love that Jess's, fa- Jess's friend faked her own death to get away from her. Right. This is the <sighs> episode about death where the editor dies. But then like the beat plot is that Jess's friend who she thought was dead actually had just faked a funeral. I mean, OK, so I've thought about this. Her. There's no conventional way to end a friendship in a way that you would have a breakup in a relationship. So sometimes the best option is to pretend to kill yourself. <laughs> It is so true when friendships are meant to be breakups. They don't. You can't. No, you, it's hard to have an end of a friendship. Like, you sometimes you just hope that you can, like, with time, like, just distance yourself from a person. But sometimes people are really persistent, so you have to say something. And even if you say something, it's like you're not always going to be so clear because it's like I don't, I don't think about you that much. So it's like why would I put all this effort into writing this, like, really in-depth message and like really go in and put a lot of time into it let me just be like hey we love some space and then that actually doesn't really mean that much to someone because it's like oh you just want space maybe something's going on with you um so there's no way to actually there's end a friendship. Really no so way. you actually sometimes you have to pretend to kill yourself and it's the only solution i'm on jess's friend's side honestly um sh- uh a lot of people shouting out shows this season. Hannah calling grandma Flo, Flo job. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, Hannah's, this is Kareem. Hannah's whole interaction with David's wife at his funeral. Right. Do you want to recount what that is of? Yes. Uh, no way. We. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Hannah uh, is introduced to David's wife, who is straight. Um, even though he's gay, but she knows and she doesn't care, even though they still have a loving and sexual relationship <laughs> somehow by David's assistant. Um, it's like turn the assistant turns to David's wife and is like, Oh, this is the girl I was talking about. David's wife assumes it's a different girl and not actually um who actually Hannah is. And it's like Oh my god! I've heard so much about you. I've heard about your Tourette's and how obese you are. And it's like I never thought I was obese. I thought I was just chubby. And then and then and I don't have. I don't even have Tourette's. I just put a Q-tip in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the. It's a. It's like this woman is so flustered in this moment, and um, it's kind of just like you can't give her a damn break at her husband's funeral. I just think it's so funny that you, it was, it's like, you're the obese one. And she's like, I actually don't know a lot about um, that. Um, <laughs> like, I feel like that's probably so Lena Dunham's experience in Hollywood. Everybody being like, so you're not size zero. So you must be the biggest person in the world. And she's like, so I'm just a girl. Um, I'm just hanging out. I'm, I'm making a movie about or I'm making a TV show about girls. I was kind of acting crazy towards me. I don't really know what to do. Um I definitely can see like the notes of Lena's personal life being played out in this season, like with the um, book deal where they're like, we love you, girl. You're psycho. You're so raw and real. And she's like, "Uh, yeah, let me become a character. Uh, What was your favorite part of season three? You go first. I would say my favorite part of this season is truly just Shoshana on the road trip. It just, there's no one funnier to me than this. Like just, the question, I the quote around Halloween, where it's like, I'll never be bored as long as there's Halloween. It's like, you get it, girl. Thank God someone gets it. <laughs> um, I wonder what else I really love in this season. Um, 
there's just so many good moments that I can't pick. <laughs> and that's my answer. I love Cousin Catherine. I think Hannah and Cousin Catherine, is that her name? Yeah. Um, arguing is so funny when it's like, so do you want to get a drink later? And she's like, well, it doesn't seem like you want. And she's like, well, I asked you. So we're getting a drink. And Hannah's like, okay, yes. <laughs> and then they are just at a drink. And Catherine's like, I don't drink. And Hannah's like, okay, why'd you take me to a bar? <laughs> she's like, because I thought you'd be the kind of person that does. And Hannah's just like, all right. <laughs> it's just so like being friends with someone while actively being so mad at them is so funny. We have to do one woman plays. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we really do have to wrap it up, but I'm so glad we got to recap season this is three. So fun. I think our season three of the podcast has been so fun. It's been the best of. Uh, can't wait for season four. Um, starting next week, we will be in our new studio space. So get excited get for that. Get ready for that. We just got our couch doctor installed. Yeah, couch. we had to call the co- couch doctor who broke the couch in half and then rebuilt it because there's a pipe in front of the door that prevented it from going in. <sighs> Another it's day. no problem. <laughs> um, but we hope you guys have an amazing Thanksgiving week. Um Love y'all so much. We'll be back with season four, four. next Tuesday. Oh my Tuesday. god, I'm so excited. Bye. Bye. Bye.